Wow, thanks for setting up this picnic for me for the one year anniversary of my channel. I really appreciate all you've done for me. Oh, I love you too, Mrs. Toilet Paper Roll. <laughs> God, I need real friends. Hang on, sorry, I think someone's trying to text me real quick. I, I've, I've got to go. <laughs> I've, I've got to go. Uh, that can't be good. <gasps> you! It, it can't be! I, I thought I banished you to the Shadow Realm over a year ago! The Shadow Realm? Dude, don't you mean your underwear drawer? Shoot! How can I be so careless? What am I gonna do? I don't know. Guess you'll have to play me, huh? No. No, I can never do that. I promised myself I would never touch you again. Oh, can't I? Then I guess you're okay with never seeing your friend again, aren't you? Uh, help! Help! Oh, fuck! Help! Jeff Compass? A hit YouTube channel Jeff Compass? What have you done? You monster! Me? Oh, I haven't done anything, but you have. See, here's the deal. You play me, and Jeff gets to go home free. If not, well, let's just say things won't end well for your friend. You're gonna kill him? Oh, heavens no, I'm not a monster. But I do have a special punishment for him. Wait, that's it? Are you kidding me? Wait, it's a 10 hour loop? Oh god, help! Please, someone get me out of here now! No, Jeff! Don't worry, buddy, I'll save you. But I'm gonna regret it. The year is 2001, and Sega just dropped one of the most revolutionary GameCube titles to ever see store shelves, Super Monkey Ball. Full to the brim with extremely challenging arcade-style levels, awesome minigames that build off of the main mode, and a kick-ass techno soundtrack, Sega knew they had a hit on their hands. Developed by Amusement Visions, the game was actually adapted directly from an arcade cabinet simply titled Monkey Ball that released earlier in the year. The point? Guide your monkey, in a ball, to the goal as quickly as possible by tilting the stage around. It was tough as nails, too, requiring expert level precision and speed control, all while going as fast as possible to beat the time limit. To entice new players, the game was actually split into three difficulties, beginner, advanced, and expert, just to make things easier for all you strugglers out there. The game was such a smash success that it only took one year for Amusement Visions to release a kick-ass sequel that improved upon everything the first game had set up. It added in a hella charming story mode with almost an hour worth of cutscenes and doubled the amount of minigames. They didn't have to do that, but they did it. They did it for us. Then one day, disaster struck. Amusement Visions was dismantled by Sega in an act of what was called corporate reshuffling. Monkey Ball was left in limbo for several years, only receiving a compilation, a handheld title, and whatever the fuck Monkey Ball Adventure was. Then one day in 2006, a miracle happened. A brand new, fully original Super Monkey Ball title. Alright, you fucking kidding me? I really don't want to do this. Let's get this over with. Uh. Yeah, I can't fucking do this. Come on. Is it too late to kill myself? Alright, so the first thing you'll notice upon starting the game is that all of the characters have been needlessly redesigned. That's pretty wacky, huh? Actually, no, it's just kind of stupid, really. 
The original game's in such a strong art direction with its semi-realistic look, and now everything just looks like a unicorn threw up on it. It's really off-putting to the experience, but hey, as long as the gameplay is fun, it shouldn't really matter, right? Right? Well, surprise, the game is actually fucking horrible. Whoop-dee-doo. So the game is split into two modes, main game and party games, and trust me, we'll get to the party games. Unlike previous entries, however, the main mode is only a story mode, meaning the arcade-style beginner, advanced, and expert difficulties are completely gone, replaced with... worlds. Real original, guys. Well, I guess a story mode isn't a horrible thing to be stuck with. I mean, the story mode in Super Monkey Ball 2 was off the walls and tons of fun. Let's see what we're getting into here. I'm not skipping you here. That's the entire story. A 30 second cutscene with no dialogue or explanation for what's happening. Yeah, we're in for a good time, aren't we? If you're as confused as I am as to what's going on here, well, join the club. I guess this giant, uh, ape steals this golden banana bunch and laughs and then flies away. Okay, what was the point of all of this again? This is what we gave up the old gameplay style for? Okay, well, you know what? I'm an optimist. I mean, sure, everything I've seen so far is a complete bastardization of what the first two Monkey Ball games were all about, but as long as the gameplay is fun, it doesn't even ma- MOTION CONTROLS! I, I can't believe it. I, I can't fucking believe it. They had the audacity to give a series all about precision the least precise control scheme imaginable. I mean, what's next? Motion-controlled Mario Kart? All right, yeah, I walked right into that one, didn't I? Seriously, this decision still boggles my mind to this day. Motion controls? For a Super Monkey Ball game? You're probably wondering how this is even possible to play, huh? Well, don't worry! Sega came up with a foolproof fix! Making the game as easy as possible! Yes, now every level is full to the brim with guardrails and unimaginative level design. So you can't possibly die, but just in case you're really scared, they decided to add in a jump button. Yeah, a jump button. In a game series where the entire appeal was you could only tilt the stage and nothing else. Sega is kind of like that angry house cat who just can't stop causing trouble. You know, sometimes you just gotta take the spray bottle and tell them no. Bad Sega, no jump button, no. Jeez, what were they even thinking here? I mean, I know every Karen and their goddamn grandmother thought motion controls were the hottest thing back in 2006, but t did Monkey Ball really need them? <sighs> okay, maybe I'm overreacting a bit. I mean, yeah, the motion controls are really bad, and the level design is bland and safe and really unmemorable, and, you know, maybe the art direction and music hardly resemble Super Monkey Ball at all, but... Actually, no, you know, I'm not sure how this could get much worse. Yes, in a completely asinine decision, they decided to add in boss battles to the game. And yeah, they're all fucking horrible. Look how pathetic this is. I mean, he's trying to flat me off the stage, but the guardrails won't even let me die. Poor bastard. I mean, it looks like he's really trying his best here. Well, I finally completed the first world of the game. Time to go on to the second one. Um. Yeah, they did it. They really went and did it. Unskippable credits after each and every world. Well, technically it's skippable after the first time, but still, why did they put in credits after every world? Because the first two games did it at the end of each challenge mode? Yeah, that's the thing you should have copied from the first two games. Good job, everyone. Pack it up. Let's go home. The game doesn't even get a whole lot better going forward. In fact, it kind of gets worse the more you play. The game gets pretty hard towards the end, but not in the same way that the first two games get challenging. No, none of the challenge in this game comes from the actual game or level design. It comes from the fact that you have to use motion controls to get around. 
it never really feels like you're in control, it just sort of feels like you're guiding AA in a general direction. But even if you find that kind of unfair challenge enjoyable for whatever reason, the game doesn't even get hard until around World 6, out of the game's 8 worlds. Well, technically there's 10, but you have to unlock the last two by doing no death runs of each of the main 8 worlds first, and there's no way in hell I'm doing that. You'd have to be a complete lunatic to go through all of that. Okay, just a little bit more, a little bit more, we're so close to World 10, I can't wait. Okay, just a little bit further, don't go too crazy, just a little bit and... Yes! Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. I got to World 10, dude. That's so crazy, dude. Look! I made it to World 10. It's so crazy. Wait, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, no, wait! Well, there you go. I reviewed and played Banana Blitz. Can I be done now? Ah! <laughs> Aren't you forgetting the party mode minigames? No! Yes, returning from the first two games are the party mode minigames. These were awesome in the first two games. I mean, everyone remembers their first time playing Monkey Target or Monkey Fight. They managed to take the monkey in a ball concept and spin it into all sorts of new and interesting gameplay styles. Let's see what kind of party mode minigames Banana Blitz has to offer. I mean, there is 50 of them. That's a hell of a lot more than the 6 in the first game, or even the 12 in Super Monkey Ball 2. Well, here goes nothing. Uh, sheep wrangling? Jigsaw puzzles? Seesaw challenges? What in Neptune's name does any of this have to do with Monkey Ball? Are they actually kidding me? Is, is this a joke? Am I unpunked? Jesus, I, I get 50 minigames is a lot, but you didn't have to make that many. You can tell the developers just ran out of ideas after like 10 minigames. I mean, they were really grasping for straws and just anything to throw in here. Hell, the entire Great Cubed videography is in this fucking minigame collection. Enjoy. Even the returning minigames like Monkey Target and Monkey Fight are absolutely bastardized. Not that that's surprising, I mean, look at the rest of this game. Listen, I know I sound like a bitter old man, but just hear me out and maybe you'll see things the way I see them. The first two Monkey Ball games were truly something special. I mean, you can tell they were made out of pure love, and that the developers knew what they wanted it to be. Banana Blitz doesn't really have any sort of identity, it sort of feels like they tried to recreate the first two games but didn't understand any of the fundamental design choices that made them great in the first place. It was all about making short, physics-based obstacle courses where you had to rely on nothing but your own wits and the ability to tilt the stage. It wasn't about boss battles or super long platforming challenges and jump buttons, and it certainly wasn't about fucking sheep wrangling minigames. That's why the minigames in the first two worked so well. They took the core concept of rolling around in a ball and created fun party games out of it. Well, except for Monkey Boat, but uh... We don't talk about that one. You've done it. You've broken me. I, I, I'm a shell of who I was before I started playing you. But now, it's my turn. Time to end your miserable existence once and for all. To extinguish all of the pain and misery you've caused. Alright, Banana Blitz. Your days of villainy are over. Wait! No! Well, time for my long hike home. Wait, aren't I forgetting something? Nah, I'm sure it's not that important. I'd remember it if it was. All right, hey, Greg, one, I hear it. I hear the cheering. I hear it. Now, Greg, get me out of here. I haven't eaten in approximately five weeks and three days. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. I haven't drank water. I haven't played sneakers for the original Xbox. I'm like, that's some of the basic necessities of life. So let's just... Let's just bust me out of here. I'm, I'm gonna be left here to die, aren't I? This, this sucks. Well, well, you know what? If they find me and they eat me, it was all worth it in the end. No, it wasn't. Get me out of here, please. Wow, I can't believe it's been an entire year of making mediocre YouTube videos. A big thank you to everyone who's been watching for the last year, even just since yesterday. I mean, like, I really appreciate it. And also, big shout out to Jeff Compass, Ninja Star Compass, and Johnny for being a part of this video. Couldn't have done it without you guys. And for Cardano for giving me the minigame footage since mine went corrupt. LOL. 
If you want to see some more of my content, I have it linked directly in front of you, so make sure you check that out. Until then, see you next time.